Hello everyone, Pally Chum here. Welcome back to Demon Souls. This is episode three, maybe? Uh, recording this before I actually do co-op with Tim because we're not able to do co-op yet. This is our character Goff, G-O-F, named after, or maybe the legendary archer Goff was named after us. Uh, but the goal of this character is to be Mostly an archer as we play through the game. In Dark Souls 1, I did a bow-only challenge that ended up being extremely fun. If you guys haven't seen that, I definitely recommend going back and giving it a watch. However, uh, we're pretty early in the game, and we don't have any arrows just yet. We only have uh, 16 to our name, and they do about 30 damage a shot. So... We're going to be using our dagger. We did start as an assassin, if you missed the first episode. And the dagger is a weapon I want to use in a very specific way. I don't want to walk up and just trade with people. I don't want to go blow for blow with someone. I want to wait for them to make a mistake, like exposing their back to a backstab. Or when they go in for an attack, carrying that attack away and stabbing them in the face. That's how I'm gonna justify using a weapon that isn't a bow until we have enough souls to really commit to buying arrows. And most of the souls that we get in the early game are going to be specifically for that purpose. Specifically for buying arrows. Just so we never run out. So if you're wondering why our bow character is using a dagger, that is why. Uh, however, once we get into the meat of the game, uh, our playstyle will mostly be focused on ranged attacks. These guys are pretty aggressive here. If we hit forward and attack like in Dark Souls 1, we do not have a kick to get their, to get their uh, shield out from in front of them. Let's see if I can get a parry on this guy, maybe. No, he opened up for the backstab. There it is. So I'm trying really hard to pick my openings. If you look up at the top left, we have a health bar, a uh, mana bar, the blue one, and then a stamina bar as well. We can regain health by eating some of this crescent grass left on the ground by these enemies. As they jump forward, we're going for the backstab. We get those beautiful immunity frames while we're in that. Uh, the goal of today's video is just gonna be making our way to the first boss after the tutorial. This is a pretty big castle. I think one thing Demon Souls did a really good job of is making the worlds feel huge. Especially in some of the later Dark Souls games, bonfires were like every few feet. There were instances in Dark Souls 3 where we would go to a bonfire and then from that bonfire, we would be able to see another bonfire that we could rest at. Demon Souls does not do that. However, what Demon Souls does do is give you multiple consumables to help you get through an area. So these enemies, let me make sure, I do have that ring equipped, okay. These enemies are gonna be dropping this crescent moon grass or pine resin in that case, as we're moving through to help sustain us. Now, this has some pros and cons. This is a system where if you're doing well and if you're able to hold on to your resources, it's going to feel like you always have enough healing. But if you're hitting a wall, if you're struggling, if it's taking multiple attempts to get through an area, you can run out of healing resources quite easily. And then you have to venture back to an area to kind of farm for a resource. It's not everyone's cup of tea. But it is a pretty, you know, as someone who plays these games pretty religiously. It is an interesting way of tackling some problems. Like I said, I'm mostly looking for the back steps here. I'll give you guys the tour of the area as we push through. Uh, we did play through this area. Oh, I sliced that guy to death. Oh, no. Uh, we did play through this area while we were testing some of our settings. Oh, fuck. It's everyone's favorite time. The archer off. I sidestepped. Will he do the same? No. <laughs> now, I'm kind of wondering what these lights here mean. That looks like death to me. Looks like all the boards are broken. That looks like somewhere I should not fall. So I'm not going to. 
as we make our way in. We went from fighting in pretty open corridors into a much tighter corridor here. And I remember this guy from when I played before. He stuck up on me. That dude that was just sitting to the right of the door. You gotta check your corners. On the ground here, these red areas are the ghosts of people who have recently died. So you can see where they made mistakes and try to avoid them. We're opening up into a courtyard here, but there is an item behind this. One thing about these areas being so massive is I think it really allows the player to explore quite easily. That's scary. You don't really have to go out of your way to find a side path, I guess that is what I mean. There's all these little nooks and crannies as you're moving through that checking them feels really natural. You don't really feel like you're going out of your way to check them. A uh, guy above us is throwing some fire bombs. I think we're okay as long as we stay low here. It is pretty cool to see the whole hallway light up when he throws one of those downs. Uh, we found a mail breaker. Does that count as a dagger? I'm gonna have to look into some weapons that I want to use. The only thing I've really planned out with this build so far is that I want to be an archer. That's that's all I've really thought about. Take a swing. Ow! Oh, you hurt me. Oh, hold on. Can you come outside? No, he's staying put, huh? All right, this might be an archer off. Pulled it back. If he has his shield up, does that block everything? <laughs> hey, good shot. Good shot. Checking up ahead. I don't see anybody just yet. We're going to go back to the dagger. We're in pretty close quarters here. Hey, my dude. Nice sword you got there. It'd be a shame if you smacked it against the wall for no reason. Is this another guy that's going to throw fire bombs? I'm going to take a shot at his head. 47. Yes, he blocks it even if we aim under the shield, which is kind of unfortunate. Uh, so I said there is no kick, but there is a shove. We just did it there. Shoved him off the, court, the, edge, the edge of that walkway. Uh, there is no plunging attack in this game. We'll just interrupt his attack with a shove. Interrupt it again with a shove. <laughs> Let's try to go for the backstab. Didn't quite work out. Um, I believe... There's an item somewhere if we drop down, but maybe that's up ahead. Oh, a lot of people in this hallway, and it looks like there might be some explosive barrels in this hallway, too. While he's advancing, let's just take some shots. First one down. We're going to aim at this guy up here. <gasps> just missed the head. 45. Okay, he's moving out into the balcony, so it's just going to be a one-on-one one -on -one with me and this dude here. He goes for the swing, hits the wall. There's the back step. There's the item I was looking for. So is this guy already alerted and just chucking stuff out here on this ledge? Hey, bud. <laughs> oh, two of them. Falling back. If he's throwing, I can shoot. Moving does interrupt the bow draw. We only have one arrow left. Oof. And then to get that item there, we need to tease this guy. I'm totally walking up here, yes! He pushes a ball down that breaks this platform and allows us to walk up. And this is where you get the bastard sword, the biggest weapon we've found in the game so far. And for those of you with a keen eye, 
There is also another item up here that we could see from the bottom. It's gonna be some half moon grass. I believe crescent moon grass is the least effective in the healing department. Then there is half and full moon, I believe. Okay, I can't really fight him here, so we're just gonna push him until I can get behind him. Now that we're up here, we're on even territory. We can just wait for him to swing, cycle around behind him, and take him down. This guy, unfortunately, we can't really get into an archer off with because we don't have any more arrows. Stabbed right in the spleen. Uh, we have our first guy with a lance here, taking jabs at nothing. To my left, there is also an archer, if you could see him by that door way up ahead. We're trying not to give him any angles while we're doing this. Him attacking the shield doesn't do any damage to me, and it does seem to stagger him for quite a while, too. What if I can draw these guys in here, maybe? I believe we are not able to get full health until the first boss is dead. We're just acting at half health for the time being. I'm gonna have to fucking parry this guy, huh? <laughs> Stop it! Ooh! This is getting a little awkward. That's right, you don't fuck with me, dude! You stay down there! I think I'm just gonna have to slash at this guy. You can't parry arrow shots or anything, so... Unfortunately, he had a very fortified position in the corner. Uh, this enemy is one that you're not supposed to really take down yet. And I know that there's a really good sword behind this door. I'm pretty confident I can kill him. Uh, we just have to let him hit the hit the shield <laughs> and then stab him in the back. 102 damage each time. We killed this guy on stream too, so I had a little bit of practice with it. Uh, he does heal like a dirty motherfucker though. No honor whatsoever. His attacks are really slow. Um, and like I said, if you have a shield that blocks 100% physical damage, which, ooh, woo, that hurt though. Did I die? Oh shit! Go down there. <laughs> now go in there. <laughs> oh, one trick with these guys here that I did, but I didn't talk about is if you run straight ahead, it'll aggro both of them. Like, they're over there talking. But if you just kind of inch your way out forward, you can pull one at a time. Uh, these guys can be a little hard if you're if you're brand new, fighting two at once. But it is good practice for, you know, trying to figure out how to box out two different enemies. But if you're struggling with it, yeah, just tippy-toe forward and uh, no problemo. I mean, I got another 400 souls for doing this trip again. That'll buy like seven arrows. Just block this guy as he moves up, going for the backstab. I think you do have to pick up your souls. Oh yeah, here they are, the blue things. He's probably running at me. <laughs> yeah, we should take our eyes off of him for that long. But easy backstab when he gets over here. Now, like I said, he will try to go for a heal. So we want to have him in a spot where we can backstab him while he's doing that. So like right here. Ooh, good hit. I think that'll do it. New moon grass. Ooh, big boy heals, eh? I'll stick with the little ones for now. Door appears to be locked. I think there's a good sword you can get in there, if memory serves. That might be wrong. But I don't remember where to get the key from. As far as the path you're actually supposed to take, if you go the opposite way, we'll find another knight that has some blue eyes sitting in front of a doorway. Uh, I'm gonna try to get a parry off on this guy. I'm feeling confident. If I die, that's a long run back though. Oh, yeah, it One damage away from being one shot. What the fuck is that? Memory serves, there's a crossbow down here as well. 
See, I hate this about my brain. I hate that my brain can remember where an item is in Demon Souls. But I forget shit that I just heard like 20 minutes ago. That's a big fall for that guy. Uh oh, but. And this guy was above the path that we were looking at before. So if I drop down here, this leads back up to the top. If we keep traveling into the archway that has a shield at the top, it's really dark in here. But I think this is the shortcut back up to the top. There are explosive barrels in here as that guy just showed off for us. Let's just give this guy a little nudge in the right direction. How's the fall damage? Didn't appear to be lethal. We're gonna have to deal with that guy here in just a second. All two incoming. Our friend from before. I'm just gonna back up and heal. They have to move into me if they want to deal damage. Mr. the parry. Oh, I got eaten alive! take this guy out this time instead of pushing him back down there. There we go. If there's one thing Demon Souls does well, it forces you to learn from your mistakes. To get back up here, I had to kill every single one of those motherfuckers that I killed originally just to get back to this spot. If I cut these down, I believe we get some items down by the main gate. And if I can actually make it down to the bottom here, let's go ahead and equip a new item. Let's add in some fire bombs that we found. I could probably manually aim this. So I'm shooting for the barrels, okay? Oh, it's way off to the right. Okay, let's try again. Oh, yeah, this is the same spot. What are you doing? All right, I give up. We're going to have to lock on. If I can hit that guy there, it might explode and hit the other barrel. That's two kills there. Easy third. Fighting all those guys with just the dagger would have been a little troublesome. I think there was five in total. Hey, bud. And with this lever being pulled, this is our first shortcut. We got a cling ring. The cling ring, very important early on because it gives us more HP to work with. And I believe we get a hair piece from over here. Age spice, old ragged boots. The Jade Hair Ornament. This is for one of the NPCs back in the Nexus. This is back up at the top where we killed the Blue Eye Knight. The Red Eye Knight was that way. There's a fog door that we can go through. And this area is really cool because it lets you totally decide how you want to approach this. So, I can make my way down this hallway. There's a bunch of explosive barrels. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> or, which you probably wouldn't know on your first time through, unless there was a good message or something. Sorry, I totally just swung on that guy. Uh, if, you, if you didn't know, you can roll over this ledge and meet an NPC here. He just wants some help getting off this platform. Bunch of dudes down here. Easy work for our firebombs. That was a bomb, A surprise indeed. Well, now that you are here, pray thee, fend off these dreglings. Are there any more? Oh, yeah, there's one more. Let's grab this item first. It is the Thieves' Ring. 
Last of the enemies is right here. And now this NPC, not only will he go back to the Nexus, but he drops down. My thanks for your brave rescue. I am Ostrava of Boletaria. Accept this as a token of my gratitude. He gave us a brass telescope. But more importantly, once again, if you were struggling with this area, he's now gonna walk through and just man mode everything. He's just gonna start fighting. So you can choose to like help him and, you know, hopefully sway the battle in his favor. But he'll literally just like 1v1 everyone and you'll collect free souls for doing nothing. Ow. Ow, I can't see you. And if you ever get overwhelmed, just bring people to him. <laughs> He's fighting this blue knight. We can come up behind for an easy backstab, maybe. And if he dies, hey, don't even worry. You get his weapon and his, his armor for free. I want to say he, like, heals over time or something. That's what his set does. Although that part I don't remember as well. So we're kind of down in a pit right now. I'm gonna let him explore and uh, I'll poke around a little bit. I didn't go through here super thoroughly when we were testing our setup previously. Uh, I do think I am gonna eat another grass. We're kind of getting low on those, only 17. Scimitar down here. If that's your kind of weapon. We just got six souls from that guy killing something. What else is over here, my dude? Oh, he's got some archer problems. I can help. Archer problems are my specialty. This looks like another job for a firebomb here. See if I can manually aim this one. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. That'll do pretty good. Come back up to our friend who's moving through a really dark corridor here now. I'm pretty sure there's a big enemy at the end. Yeah, one of the blue-eyed knights, anyway. That's not him. This guy basically allows you to, like, co-op this area. I think that's really cool. You know, normally, if you're just traveling through and you don't know about the roll mechanics, you would find that guy last. And then he's not really helping you clear out stuff. So I feel like that's a hot tip. If you're struggling with Demon Souls, there you go, my dude. Free of charge. Just hit the like If we make our way up, there are some archers over here. And left, I believe, takes us back to the original path. As long as they keep missing that first swing, that opens them up for a really easy backstab. I do want to travel down to the original path again because I think there's a vendor along the way. I might actually be able to get some arrows. That would be really nice. Ooh, that's a halberd. He swung wide, rotated his back quite a lot. But I still found the sweet spot. Two dudes on me right now. We're going to back up. Good parry. Let's go. Just block that. Found the center. Okay. So right above my character's head right now is that ledge we rolled over. I think there was one more enemy in here, although it looks like he's dead. Maybe we killed him. And if we take a right through these things, we have an NPC. Good day to you. Care to look over my wares? Mostly stolen, but who's telling me? Look at his mouth move, dude. So he sells crescent moon grass for 100 souls each. 
He sells bolts, plate helmets, not a single arrow, huh, my dude? All right, I guess we keep going. Okay, now we need to make our way up to these archers here. There's a few different tiers of them. One on floor one, one on floor two, or I guess two and three, actually. This is the ground floor. Uh, the fall damage here is not enough to kill them, so you can't just push them off. Uh, but they're archers, so they <laughs> don't really do anything. Ever. <laughs> oh! Ah! We're fine. No fall damage. We knew that. I was not expecting that guy to be right on top of me. I completely forgot he was there, to be honest. We're going to have to get a good parry on him. To my left. Got him. Back is open. 130. I can take it. Or not. <laughs> I was trying to bait him to swing into me, and he was like, well, I guess it's time to move away. So as we go through the fog, this area is interesting. I remember Yes. Things like this. If you walk down this hallway, look how many enemies there are. You see all those guys on the left? Might be a little too dark. However... If we release all those balls... No more enemies to worry about. If memory serves, this area opens up quite a lot here. Yep. I think there might be two paths you can take. Oh, I forgot about them. They have spears, so they're going to sit behind their shields. However, they extend quite a long distance with those spears and leave their back open pretty easy. This will be familiar if you've played Dark Souls 1. Watch what happens. One really nice detail. See that darker area? <laughs> kind of down the pathway here? I wonder what that could be for. So that guy flies through and chunks everybody. Ah! I think he does give you enough time to run through if you're a little bit faster than what I was there. Those two archers were not even going to stop for. And pull the river! That door opening there means the first boss of the game, outside of the t outside of the tutorial, is now accessible. I think there's an item in this back corner too, so I'm just gonna grab that. We are almost there. Keep in mind, this has only been one area. There's only one bonfire for all of this. These environments are so sprawling. I think that's gonna be really jarring for some Souls fans who are coming back to this uh, remaster. Once again, we have two Lance guys and someone throwing bombs, so let's just fall out of here. Unfortunately, really tight corridors just gives the Lances an advantage, but maybe I can fight them on the left and sneak around to the right here. We might just have to take some jabs where we can get them. They definitely have the advantage here. 
Whoop! Whoop! I might be able to get the parry. He's so hard to see right now. Uh, firebomb? <laughs> That'll do it. That'll do it. Why didn't people just throw bombs at Spartans, dude? Easy. All right, speaking of throwing bombs, there was someone in here doing that. I ah! Literally didn't even see him in the corner! If I can make my way down this staircase, we are home free. If I could do it, we're golden. Two fiery swords here. Trying to lure them forward, they're not having it. Here they come. I'm gonna try to knock one off and see uh, if he dies. We'll knock off the second one. The guy opened himself up to a backstab way too easily. If you can't see what's going on, neither can I, don't worry. Nine damage as he falls. That sucks. This is our first time encountering this enemy that you can barely see in the corner. He uses a shield in front of him. He's made out of goop, and he basically holds a shield out to protect his goop. If you're able to get behind the shield, you can do some pretty monstrous damage to him. It just requires you to be aggressive and to maneuver around quite a lot. We find some souls on the body at the halfway point. Should have rolled there. That's my fault. I'm just going to walk behind them. Easy slashes. I don't know what happened to that fire sword guy we knocked down. He only took nine damage. Good roll. Once again, just get behind Clipping the shield so we're not doing much. He was actually able to hit me there as well. Ah! Ah! Half moon grace. Those goop shields can also throw spears out as well. So just because we get some distance doesn't mean we're safe. I'm just gonna line of sight that guy. And then we can reapproach. Might be able to do some cheeky maneuvers with a jump, but he actually moved up and presented the rear, so the end is near. Now. The first boss is available to fight. These guys have been dropping Pine Reason for a very good reason. The first boss is very, very susceptible to fire damage, which is also why we've been finding these fire bombs along the way as well. Like I said, I do want to be an archer for the most part. However, this early in the game, our options are a bit more limited. So I'm gonna go into this fight, ignite my dagger with Pine Resin and show you the easiest way to take down the phalanx. These guys actually break off from the main body and start to make their way forward. You can see that these guys are trying to protect whatever the center of this is to the best of their ability. But especially with the pine resin on, we can kind of push through the armor and these smaller shields begin to rotate around from the other side to try to cover the defenses of the actual main boss, of which I've done basically no damage to at the moment. Uh, I like to focus on just killing off these adds. Remember, they can throw things at you, so we're gonna take cover when we need to heal. This is one of the easiest bosses in all of Dark Souls, in all of the Souls games, I think, but it's one of the ones I remember the most clearly. I think it's a really cool design idea. And I think the creator of Dark Souls thought the same thing because there's a very similar kind of setup in the painted world in Dark Souls 1 where enemies are kind of hunkered down around in an area. They kind of look like goop. They just hold shields out in front of them. But hey, it's a fun idea, so we're not upset, man. We're not upset. You can just kind of relentlessly attack the main pile of goop and not go after adds. There's just something really satisfying about breaking down all of the defenses of a boss that is supposed to be all about defenses. 
that I find myself doing it a lot. I, I think it's fun to, to beat up these guys. The next area after this boss also has a few of these shield guys sitting around, and they do drop weapon upgrades. So, getting to uh, weapon upgrade stones, excuse me. So, if you want to fortify your weapon, that's how you would do it. And uh, it, they basically fight just like this. So, if you can get a little bit of practice in now, it'll help you a little bit in the next area. But I believe that's all of his defense is gone. And the boss doesn't actually do anything now. We could kind of sit here all day. I could prove it if you want. Do you, do you think that was enough time? Do you think that proves my point? Uh, without fire, we don't quite hit as hard, but I can just stab his dagger into the little bits of his goop whenever I have the stamina to do it. And sooner or later, he... It, it will fall. Last one. And like I said, this is going to be a co-op playthrough. We couldn't play through co-op prior to this. We unlock it just after this. So uh, that's why our intro was a little weird. But thank you guys so much for supporting our Dark Souls playthrough so far. We played through Dark Souls 1, 2, and 3, all in co-op, and it was so much fun. And I can't wait to dive into the meat of Demon Souls with Tim as well. Thank you guys so much for the support. I hope you know how much it means to me. We'll see you again soon. Take care. Goodbye.